I call up the doctor I asked him if he got a clue What's wrong with my heartbeat? I'm stumbling like a fool The Americans call a box of tissues Kleenex A Hoover is a vacuum cleaner for the English and there's a reason why some countries call an off-roader a Jeep Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to Jeep Wrangler and the beautiful northeastern Poland Well, I say let's get this party on the right One of the most popular off-roaders, very distinctive, cool looking with these exposed hinges. By the way, this hot top does come down fully. There's also a two-door version available. Now, speaking of versions, there's the most basic one, Sport, Luxury Sahara for a bit of poshness, and the kick-ass hardcore Rubicon, which I've got with me today. Wrangler continues on building history 60 years later and not much has changed but with an eagle eye, which I do have, we do notice a new shape for the bumpers, LED lighting, the bonnet has gained some volume and speaking of volume, let's have a look under the bonnet. So look wise, the DNA continues but at the same time Rubicon has become a modern car so beautifully compliant, a fact that is adored by the EU politicians. But the hardcore Jeep fans are shaking their heads. Two liters, four cylinders, what have you done, Jeep? But it is turbocharged and it does pump 272 horsepower. Zero to 100 is only 8.5 seconds. Still, some fans find it very difficult to get over the fact, well, that the engine has become a little bit more petite. But these are the times and the politically correct world apparently is coming more and more. There's also the 2.2 litre diesel which pumps 200 horsepower. But I hear that in terms of fuel economy is not that much better, so you might as well get the petrol. I've got proper off-road tires, so enough pussyfooting, it's time to go. I hear this guy is very brave in the wilderness. So let's give it a little tinkle, shall we? We're gonna pop you into 4L. Whilst you sit back, relax, and watch me win or fail. The very best luck to me. Show me what you've got. Beautiful red sweetheart. It's pretty rough here. But I reckon it is not rough enough for the Rubicon. Gotta keep that momentum. So don't slow down when you climb up the mountain, even though things are moving inside my vehicle like crazy. So that's a little bit of a warm up. And now we are going to climb a little mountain and descend. We do have an option of descent, so. Let's see if that's gonna work. Well, the, be the very best luck to me. And boom. Yeah, you see? Let's try that descent option. I don't know if it works or it doesn't, but oh well. I'm just gonna gently. Nah, we gotta put our foot down. And boom, rock and roll. Even got managed to get a bit of that drift in there. Actually, you can pop this car into two wheel drive and all of the power, 272 horsepower is being sent to the rear wheels. And I tell you, you can have some good fun in the sand. Okay. So far, so good. So what if I say there is time for both of us? So returning all the way. So that grand clearance of 255 millimeters, we can immerse the Rubicon water up to 76 centimeters. 
So let's give it a little bath, shall we? I'm not sure how deep it is here, but I think it should be fine for Rubicon. I mean, it's not a big deal. Put the foot down. In case things do escalate, well, you can actually take a hose and rinse your Rubicon inside the cabin like the good old times. So no worries, no worries, because it actually drains in there. So that's pretty helpful for The exterior looks are similar to the previous generation of Rubicon, but on the inside it's a whole different story. The cabin has got plenty of character, everything is well made, it feels, looks very solid, no cheap plastics here, nothing squeaks, nothing wobbles. The layout does take a while to get your head around, for example the window switches are here, but all of the controls you can operate whilst wearing those thick winter gloves. I'm not talking about those fancy leather gloves that I sometimes wear, which is very useful. It makes it a proper hardcore off-roader. We've got the front and rear locking differentials. Jeep brings the Willys name with this beautiful icon here, which actually runs across the cabin and also on the outside. Now the infotainment system, it's pretty good. It's got high resolution. You find everything here that you need to find. Certainly it's not as sophisticated as it is, for example, in a G-Class, but then again, this car costs a fraction of the G-Class price. You've got the navigation here, which is mm, the input is a little bit, takes time, but it doesn't really matter because you can plug in your Apple or Android phone, which actually solves the problem. We can do it right by. So Jeep has really stepped it up. We've got a keyless entry, so you don't need that. You can keep that in your purse. We've got heated seats, parking sensor, blind spot assist, cross traffic alert. So it really is a full on SUV. The Rubicon is extremely flexible. You can remove all of the panels. The whole roof comes down actually, including the doors. You can pop the front window on your bonnet. There's a whole variety of accessories, I believe from Moper. You can even get a snorkel so you can breathe a lot easier and get a proper snorkeling scuba diving experience. How does it feel to be a passenger? Well, I've adjusted the seat for my height, which is 1.7 meters, 5.6, and actually I've got plenty of legroom. Very good headroom. You've got the armrest here, should you fancy a cold Coca-Cola during your off-road driving. But overall, pretty good. As you hop on a normal road, the ride might not be peachy, but it is pretty good. The steering is nice and light, the turning circle is pretty good, the handling, well, it is a big box, so don't expect the physics of a coupe, but it doesn't really matter actually. Surprisingly, this car, despite its massive size, it is easy to handle around town, and the bonus is the rear camera that comes as standard. Let's check the boot space. There's a way to open the boot. Some complain, but I say, well, there is a will, there is a way. Actually, plenty of room. You can, of course, fold these seats back, but for an off-roader, and how's the socially compliant engine? Well, foot down. Actually, it's got enough punch. It's just boom and go. And the most important thing is that the gearbox is able to keep it up. Now, speaking of gearboxes, automatic gearbox and four-wheel drive system come as standard in all Wranglers. Now, sure, as you hop on the motorway, you get quite a bit of wind uh, noise and the tire noise, especially with the off-road tires, but this is something to be expected, especially that you can literally pull this car apart and have a proper cabriolet. So what about competition? We've got the G-Class lurking around the corner, but really, it is actually the second-hand G-Class that is a direct competition of the Rubicon. And then again, the G-Class targets slightly different customer base, but the big threat is the new Land Rover Defender. 
Now, speaking of the prices, so this uh, car in the UK is £50,000. The basic version of Sport is only £42,000. To give you an idea that the Fender starts from £49,000, I can't tell what is the difference because I am yet to drive the new Defender. But in terms of value for money, it is definitely here. So the Rubicon, it is so cool, it is so raw, it's got so much character, this car. So confident and so brave in the wilderness. Easy, speed is fun, but sometimes I do wonder if actually the off-road experience is not beating the speed for me because the amount of fun you gotta have in the Rubicon, I can't quite describe it. This car is awesome, but at the same time, it is a full-on SUV that you can drive every day to work, but it doesn't make it any less of a true off-roader because I tell you, this is a kick-ass off-road and I absolutely blooming love it. And that's it for today. I will continue my journey. A massive thank you to Jeep Poland, to Dorota and Rafa for letting me this car. Have a lovely day, whatever that you're doing. I shall see you all very, very soon. Bye.